This week, I was at a training for educators. I was conducting a training in professional development, and we did this thing called Question Quest, where we go around and ask a bunch of questions on these little cards right here. But at the end, we make a circle, and we go over each question, kind of talk about what some of the answers they, they heard from other people. And one of the questions was, what is one crucial ingredient for true happiness? What's one crucial ingredient for true happiness? People said kindness, you know, having a job, purpose, treating people well. And then one person said gratitude. And I thought, I like that answer, gratitude. So today I want to talk about gratitude in this episode of Connecting Faith and Life. Hello, Mr. Brown here Proclaiming Ministry, helping you connect faith and life. And this podcast is for you. And I'm grateful that you take time to watch this podcast. But like I said in the opening, I want to talk about gratitude. What is gratitude? I actually do videos called I Choose the Attitude of Gratitude. And gratitude is just the idea of the, of the position of being thankful, being grateful for what you have. And sometimes it's easy for us to focus on what we don't have versus what we want to have. Like we can be so ungrateful. And here we come. It's in the fall season. We're going to head to Thanksgiving. And as soon as Thanksgiving's over, we have Black Friday. We go out and rush back in the day to open the stores at four in the morning. People be out there lined up for hours to get a deal on something, right? And I realized I'm in this I, this season of purging right now. My studio is a mess. My 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 closet is not a mess, but it's a mess to me because I go to get one T-shirt and I see like 50 T-shirts. Guess what? I need to get rid of some T-shirts. I only wear one at a time, right? Uh, I love the fact that my wife can make T-shirts, take some of my old T-shirts and make these quilts out of them, which are really cool. But I'm, I just want to be grateful for what I have. Sometimes I have so much stuff, I want to be grateful. So when I heard her say that, that made me think of this passage of Scripture, Psalm 103. Uh, Psalm 103. So I'm going to go over really quick with you. Psalm 103 has been really a blessing to me. I may read the whole thing. I may not have to read the whole thing, but uh, this is David here. I'm going to open up my commentary right here. David is 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 really just talking to the Lord. Or just uh, This is a song, but he's just being grateful for deliverance, for what God has done for him. And I think it's a it's an amazing psalm to, to read, but to remember all God has done. This commentary, the Bible Knowledge Commentary, says this, after reviewing uh, the mercies of God, Toward him, David found hope in his people's covenant relationship with the Lord. Though they were sinful and frail, in his, his confidence, the psalmist called on all creation to bless their Lord. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Bless, you know, be grateful. Uh, praise him. Th- that kind of idea. Bless the Lord because he's so good to us. So I'm going to read some of this passage. And here's a commentary. If you want to read on the side, you can feel free. Uh, I like this commentary. It's been very beneficial to me. But this is the app called the uh, Olive Tree app is a Bible app I use for most of my studies. I use it on my phone, iPad. I've talked about it in the past. But let's read Psalm 103 together. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. David has encouraged himself to bless the Lord, to give thanks to the Lord, to be grateful to the Lord, to say, Lord, I bless you. You're so good to me. He's encouraging himself. And sometimes we got to encourage ourselves to bless the Lord, to be, to be grateful for what the Lord has done for us, who he is and his presence in our lives. And sometimes you got to talk to yourself. I know y'all talk to yourself like I do. All of us have conversation with ourselves and sometimes even argue with ourselves. But how often do you encourage yourself to bless the Lord? The psalmist here, bless the Lord. He said, bless the Lord, my soul. All that's within me. He's calling on everything within him to bless God's holy name. Verse two, bless the Lord, my soul, and forget not all of his benefits. I like that. Don't forget the benefits God has blessed you with. And sometimes the reason we're not grateful is because we don't remember all this God has done for us. I mean, think about it. When I was growing up, say he woke me up this morning, started me on my way. Like, yes, I'm grateful for that. But I need to remind myself to be grateful, not to forget the benefits. Currently, in this moment right now in my life, my pinky toe is working perfectly fine. There's nothing wrong with my pinky toe. I can get up, walk. I can even run on it. My knee may give me some problems, but that's another story. But my pinky toes, both of my pinky toes are doing just fine. Do I take time to give thanks for that? Because when they're not working, I'm having a problem, right? I remember I got an ingrown toenail once. Woo! It was not fun, right? But I need to make sure that I'm giving thanks. Forget none of his benefits. Now, he's going to talk about a lot of benefits here, and he's going to start with, I think, one of the most important. He said, verse th- verse 3, who forgives all our iniquities, all my iniquities, forgiven. And as a believer, now, he was... He was before Christ, but he understood him being forgiven for his sins. But for me, as a believer in Jesus Christ, knowing that my sins, past, present, and future, have been paid for by the blood of Jesus Christ is, is a benefit. It's an amazing benefit. It's like I'm, I'm, I've been set free from sin. I've been redeemed. I've been bought back 
from the, the clutches of death and sin, I'm now his child and I'm forever forgiven for all my sins. So that is an amazing benefit that I got to remember that I'm, I've been set free from sin. He says, who forgives all your iniquities, who heals all your diseases. I don't mean that we'll all, everybody will have all our diseases healed and we won't ever have sickness, but I have been healed. And I know what David was talking about. Let me see what says in the commentary here. It says, verse 3, David praised the Lord for many mercies, including forgiveness of sins, healing of sicknesses, deliverances from death, um, the pit, uh, uh, sending them for a grave, uh, enrichment of his life, loyal love, tender compassion. So he, he talks about what he talks about in verses 3 through 5. But, I mean, you say all my diseases, but he's healed me of any disease I've had. He's healed me from it, right? From chicken pox and whatever else. I've been healed from those things. I need to give thanks for what God has done. Verse 4. And I, I'm kind of reading what David said, but also trying to apply it to my life. And I'm kind of skipping the point here. And we need to look at what David was saying in the context and what he called his people to sing as a psalm um, back in Israel. But I can apply it to my life as well. Verse 4. Who redeems your life from the pit, who crowns you with steadfast love and mercy who satisfies you with good so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. I can, I can relate to that. I've been saved from the pit of hell. I've been saved from the grave. I guess one day I will die and this physical body will be in the grave, but one day I'll be resurrected with a new body. And I can give thanks for that. So I think and if we were put in the categories, thank for what God, thank, being grateful for what God has done as a believer, as a child of God, what he's accomplished in Jesus Christ, I can be so grateful for that. And he's blessed me with steadfast love and mercy. He satisfied me with good things. Every good and perfect gift comes from the Father above, it says in James. I can be grateful as I look at what God has done in my life. Not only that the fact that I am saved, but he continues to bless me. Even though I do have problems, I kind of joke sometimes with kids when I do my assemblies. And you know, I say, when you make better choice, you live a better life, so choose well. Oh, yeah, that's the message, right? And I kind of explain to them, when you make better choices, you will live a better life. Your life won't be perfect. No one has a perfect life. Your life won't be perfect, but you will have a better and better life if you make better choices, right? And I said, listen, you will still have problems. As a matter of fact, I have so many problems, my problems got problems. And some of them smirk, some of them laugh. But the point is this, we still have problems. But I'm grateful I can look at all these great benefits that God has given me, and it's overwhelming. Kind of like these cell phones. We all got cell phones, right? And many of us don't know all the benefits on these cell phones. We don't understand all the things that we have that on the cell phone, we just don't know yet because <laughs> we need to figure them out. Now, I'm the nerd. I will sit there and watch YouTube videos and find out all the new things that it can do. I, I, I'm, I'm a nerd like that. But there's so many benefits God has done for us. And we need to just reflect, maybe even journal, write down some of those benefits. He says in verse three, verse two, for, and forget not all of his benefits. And he gives a list right here. Look at verse six. He goes on. The Lord works righteousness and justice for all who are oppressed. He made known his ways to Moses, his acts to the people of Israel. The Lord is merciful, and he's slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. This is the one I want to talk about. I think in Exodus chapter 34, 32 or 34, he get Jesus, God talks about himself to Moses. He said, the Lord, the Lord, he began to proclaim who he is. And he says this, the Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. I'm so grateful for the Lord's mercy and grace in my life. I deserve nothing, but God has given me so much. So I'm so grateful that God has been so great and slow to anger. Like I deserve God's wrath. I was preaching a couple months ago and I said, listen, if I was God, y'all wouldn't be here because I don't think I would have the mercy and the compassion and being slow to anger. I think uh, we watched a Bible project and they said the slow, slow to anger means to be long of nose, right? He talked about something being long of nose and Evan just kept laughing about that, that he's slow to anger, but he's abounding stuff. Now, don't get it wrong. Don't get it twisted. God does have wrath and he will use that wrath, right? But God is slow to anger and abounding steadfast love. Verse 9, he will not always chide, nor will he keep his anger forever. Verse 10, he does not deal with us according to our sins, nor repay us according to our iniquities. Aren't you grateful? Like, sometimes people say they want fairness. I'm grateful I don't have fairness because I would, I deserve so much more than I've been given as far as wrath and negative things. But God has blessed me and he's slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. Verse 11, 
For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his steadfast love toward those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. Benefit, benefit, benefit. Look at all these benefits God has bestowed upon us as his children that should lead me to a place of being so grateful for each and every day that I have, every breath I breathe, every, everything I see, I should be so grateful. That is so important to be grateful for all God has done for me. As far as the east is from the west, so far as he's moved our transgressions from us, they will never meet again. Again, in Christ, I'm fully forgiven, fully, freely, and forever. Now, I kind of pause on that freely part because it wasn't free totally. It was free to me, but not free to Christ. Christ paid the penalty for my sins. Verse, no, verse 13, as a father shows compassion on his, to his children, so the Lord shows compassion to those who fear him. Verse 14 is one of my favorite verses. I have a lot of favorite verses. If y'all heard me before, I say favorite verses all the time. One of the ones that really means a lot to me. Verse 14, for he knows our frame. He knows, he remembers that we are but dust. He knows our frame. That God is, he's so compassionate. He's, he knows me. He knows me better than I know myself. But he remembers that we're, he knows he, we're just dust. And I think to me, that means he remembers that I, I'm, I'm frail, I'm fragile, that I make mistakes, I make bad choices, that by nature I, I deserve wrath of God, but he remembers that, and he treats us with such compassion. Like, like verse 13, as a father shows compassion to his children, so the Lord shows compassion to those who fear him, who reverence him, who love him, who, who, who understand that he's God. He shows us compassion, and I'm grateful I can be a recipient of that great that, that compassion and remembering that I'm frail, that I'm fragile, that I'm prone to wonder. Uh, how's that song go? Prone to wonder, Lord, I feel it prone to leave the God I love. And yet he still loves us. Matter of fact, I'm in with this. I'm not going to finish the whole passage here. Oh, 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 verse 15. This is so much good here. This, this, verse 15. As, as, <laughs> as for man, his days are like grass. He flourishes like a flower of the field, for the wind passes over it, and it is gone, and his place is remembered no more. But the steadfast love of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting to those who fear him, and his righteousness to his children's children. Ah, there's so much here. I would suggest that you read Psalm 103 on your own and just meditate. Again, going back to verse verse 2, and forget none of his benefits. He gives all of these benefits to his children, and we can we can bask in those. We can be grateful for those. And so I want to go back really quick because I made a video recently, and it'll be out pretty soon. Maybe we'll put the link in the description. It's already done. But I mentioned this verse, um, verse 13 and 14. As, as a father shows compassion to his children, so the Lord shows compassion to those who fear him. For he knows our frame. He remembers that we're, we, are just, we are dust. And so I like music. I like listening to a lot of praise and worship music. Actually, kids always ask me, Mr. Brown, what's your favorite genre of music? I tell them I listen to praise and worship music, I listen to Christian hip hop. I listen to things that renew my mind to truth on a regular basis. And so this song came out. I don't know if it's a new song, but it, it ended up on a playlist of a family. So I downloaded it myself to my playlist. The name of the song is called Known. And the lyrics of this song are so amazing to me because it, um, it speaks to the fact that he knows us. Let me look up the lyrics really quick. This song to me um, has been really, really beneficial. It's one of those songs I listen to over and over again. You know, you get in this groove and you hear it over again the kids that they's like dad again <laughs> um let me see oh here it is taryn wells is how you say his name taryn wells known by taryn wells and again i made a video about this already and i'll put a link in the description i don't want to go over too much more all right i can share my screen again here it is so i like this song it starts by saying it is so unusual it is frightening you see right through the mess inside me and you call me out to pull me in tell me I can start again and I don't know I don't need to keep hot keep on hiding I'm fully known and loved by you you won't let go no matter what I do and it's not one or the other it's hard truth and ridiculous grace to be known and fully loved by you I'm fully known and loved by you that song got me because I am fully known he knows I'm but dust he knows me but yet I'm, I'm loved I'm accepted in the beloved, as it says in Colossians. I'm accepted by the Father because of Jesus Christ, and so I'm fully known. And if you think about this idea, 
most of us spend our time hiding from God, hiding from other people for sure. Hiding from other people, not wanting to be fully known. We're afraid because if they really knew us, would they really love us? Would they really care? Would they reject us? If they fully know who we really were in our, in our, in our quietest moments, in our secret times, if they knew. And the truth is God knows. God knows me better than I know myself. He knows my ins and outs. Psalm 139 talks about the fact that he knows when I sleep, when I rise up, when I walk. He knows my thoughts from afar off. He knows me, but yet he still loves me. I'm fully known and loved by you. Again, check out the, I'll put the link in the description. The video's done at this point, um, but I want you to check that out because, and even listen to the song and to know that we're loved by God. And so going back to my original premise, the question that was asked is what is one crucial ingredient for true happiness? I think number one, of course, is trusting Jesus Christ, your savior, to know God, the father, know your created purpose, but also gratitude, to be grateful for all that God has done. There's many other ingredients too, but I think to be grateful, the Bible says it's good to, to give thanks to the Lord and sing praise to the most high. It's a good thing. Why? It reminds us of our position, who we are, and that, that we're reliant upon this great, gracious, compassionate, loving God. And I think that's one reason I like listening to a lot of praise and worship music. It's a daily reminder. It's a moment by moment reminder of who God is and who I am in God. Because Everything else around us says, hey, you don't need God. You, you're sufficient yourself, all these other worldly views. But I can remember that I need God and that I have God and, and not to forget his benefits. Who, who, who saved me, who forgave me my sins, who gives me life, who gives me breath, who gives me, who else my pinky toe feel all right, even when it gets hurt to heal me <laughs> of my pain of my pinky toe. There's so much to be grateful for. So I think when we talk about this idea of connecting faith and life, here's my faith over here. I believe, I trust, I love God, and I want to connect that with my life every day. And one of the best ways to do that, I think, is to make sure we're being people who are grateful and showing gratefulness to all the benefits that God has bestowed upon us, his loving kindness, his compassion, his mercy, and be recipients of that and show that gratefulness in how we live our lives each day. Hey, thanks for joining me for this episode of Connecting Faith and Life. Hey, you've got a topic idea you want to talk about? I would love to to make sure I'm meeting you meeting you where you are. Like, what are some topics? What are some things that you want to talk about as we all on this journey to live for God by connecting faith and life? To live out the faith we believe in Jesus Christ and God, what the Bible says, and how we live each and every day that we our walk will be worthy of the Lord. Um, that's my, my goal in life. So hopefully as you watch this content, whether you watch on YouTube, on, on Instagram, whether you watch on Facebook, whether you watch or listen to this podcast on Apple, Spotify, wherever you listen to it and c consume our content. Our goal is to help you live for God by connecting faith and life. Until next time, peace. And maybe one day I'll tell you why I say peace all the time. It may not be what you think. <laughs>